This is now Tarot Lesson number 133. And I want to look mainly at a couple of, a couple of cards in, a, in the Celtic Cross we looked at last time. Um, before that, I want to make three points. One is, in the last video, I realised afterwards that I had forgotten to say something. So I wrote down here, forgot or did I? And it's because maybe I didn't forget it, but maybe I didn't remember it because it wouldn't have gone down well or it would have been better to leave it till later. Do you know what I mean? And with that in mind, let's say you do a reading for somebody and afterward you think, oh, I should have said that or I wish I had thought of that at the time. And you can't do that. I mean, you can, but... You're not supposed to beat yourself up. So instead of thinking, I should have said that during the reading, maybe you think this card might indicate that, but it wasn't appropriate to say that at the time or the person would not have understood what I was saying. They would have misinterpreted and or they would have been confused. And that's why you didn't remember. And so there's something you're kind of asking for trouble if you do a reading and then later think about what or wish you had said such and such. Um, there can be other reasons, more important reasons, why you didn't say whatever you think about later at the time and probably it wasn't appropriate or the person wouldn't have understood. So I'm suggesting that you don't beat yourself up later. By all means, think about what you might have said and write it down or remember it for some other time. But it doesn't mean that you made a mistake. So the thing that I hadn't, I hadn't remembered to say last time was um, uh, I, I came across this idea that if, if you're afraid of something, all it means is you're outside your comfort zone. So that, and most people, when, they are, when you're outside your comfort zone, you want to become comfortable again. So you turn your back to the fear and scamper back to where you came from, where you feel comfortable and safe. So the thing is, if you stay where you're afraid and live with it for a bit of time, what you find is your comfort zone gets bigger and so you're more able to handle that fear and other types of fear as well. So there's something, maybe think about that if let's say you're doing a reading and somebody tells you they're afraid of doing something, you've got something you can say. If you're afraid you're outside your comfort zone, so either do what's, what you feel comfortable with but you probably have to face the fear again at some point. Whereas if you stay afraid or anxious or whatever it happens to be, your comfort zone will ex expand and get bigger. And the second thing was, um, if you remember last time I talked about the cave and how um, it may be that when we have a moment of insight, it changes us. And so I wrote down 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and 12. So let's say you, it's 10 o'clock and you are you at 10 o'clock. And that's what you look like, right? And then you have a, mom a moment of insight at 11 o'clock. So now you're slightly bigger, right? And then at 12 o'clock, you have another bit of insight. The second insight affects this 11 o'clock version of you, not the 10 o'clock version of you. And I just wanted to make that point that when you when you notice something or you understand something or you see it better or see it more completely, it changes you a little bit. And it's the changed version of you who moves into the future, not the old you that you may have got used to. And I think it's something we can be aware of so that we keep up to date with our own self and our own developing being or developing understanding, whatever it happens to be. So this Celtic cross, I, I had a thought about it and 
rather than figure it all out beforehand, I thought I would try it this way and see if we can figure it out together. So the first card, the, the question was about relationships. And the first card was a page of swords. And it's because the page of swords can represent somebody who is a little bit afraid. That's why I thought of talking about fear and it represents being outside your comfort zone. So we've got the page of swords here, and this is the atmosphere surrounding the question. It can describe the questioner. And that's why I want, I want to get to this seventh card, which happens to be the nine of cups, because that's the self. And this can be the self, but what's the difference between the atmosphere surrounding the question? And because it's the atmosphere, you're automatically part of the atmosphere. And that can be why the first card describes you, the questioner. But maybe understand that it's not just you. It's about the question and, and the atmosphere. And this card in the sixth, the uh, seventh position represents you, the questioner, or whoever it happens to be. So the Page of Swords is a page, and pages represent young people. So the questioner is either new in the relationship or is experiencing a a kind of relationship that, that he hadn't been in before because the page is inexperienced. So either he, he hasn't done it before or it's the beginning of the relationship because, you know, it, things change. When, you, when you've known somebody for six months or a year, it's very different from the, what it was like in the first couple of weeks when you started going out with them. So the page of swords is the atmosphere and then the opposing force was the, the eight of cups. And so... In a way, that's the problem. You're new at something and you ought, what the opposite of what's getting in the way is the fact that you, maybe deep down you know you ought to walk away, but you're not walking away and that's what's making you anxious or that's what's making you a little bit doubtful or because you've got a sword in your hand, you know, you feel defensive and so you're not confident and optimistic when it comes to this particular relationship and this particular person, deep down you are. You, you're, this is the wish card, the, the nine of cups. And when it's upright, it means all your wishes will come true. So you're confident and optimistic and hopeful that things are going to work out well. But there's this other part of you, the page of swords, that recognizes it's not all plain sailing because there's an urge to walk away. Either you want to walk away, you, the questioner, want to walk away, or the other person is making you think they want to walk away. So the foundation was this Two of Cups. So the question's about relationships, and, and this is the past as well on the foundation. So maybe... The, the relationship got off to a good start with the Two of Cups here, but now it's mm, faltering a little bit and people are thinking about walking away and finding somebody else. The, question, the, the person who did this reading put the fourth card up here and this is the immediate future or the highest you can attain at the moment. I forget what he said, but it's like, it's what's going to happen. And if we look at, there's one thing I wanted to look at here with... Um, a diagram. So in a Celtic cross, we've got a card there, we've got a card there, and we've got a card there. And this middle card is like a straight line, it's up and down. And the card below and the card in the middle and the card here up top can represent a straight line. And then we've got these four over here, which is another straight line. And this card on its own is a straight line. And that's kind of what I want to look at later. But maybe if you look at these three cards together, you were with somebody, you're a little bit doubtful, but it's not going to work. Because that's you, and this is now, and this is the future. And then you've got the lovers upside down, two people. So you get two people down here and two people up here, but the one up here is a major trump and it's upside down. It's not going to work. And this can be why you know you ought to walk away. You can try and make it work, and maybe with the Nine of Cups here, you want to make it work. You think this person is the answer to all your dreams, but they're not. And we can look at this, because it's a major trump in the lovers, there's something about relationships. Um, uh, we, we need, if we're going to, have a long-term relationship with somebody, we, we need to be compatible physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. 
You know, you've got to be on the same page as them in some way if you're going to stay together. It doesn't mean you've got to be the same, but somehow you need to connect diff and on different levels. And here with the lovers upside down, there's an important component in the relationship that's missing. And that's why it's not going to work, even though you want it to. And then we've got what's, what's passing away is the two of pentacles and what will come is the star. So this is the immediate future, I think. That's what the person said, or the highest you can attain at the moment, something like that. But it's followed by the star, which is the immediate future. So is it that something's going to click and you're going to get together with this person and your wishes are going to come true? Because a major trump is a star for hope and inspiration and it's upright and it's the future. Or in the same way that this is a middle card and we've got a card across it and we've got a card here and a card here. Can we look at these three cards together? The two of pentacles, the eight of cups and the star and put them together in a sequence as a kind of story that may tell the same story as this one, but it may be different, in which case you've got, um, you've got something that, that it tells you more about the nature of the question and what's, what's likely to happen with the person and what's like, likely to happen in the answer to the question. So here we've got the two, the, you've got, you're in the relationship, there's a need to <laughs> excuse me, to take it easy and it's not going to work. Here you're juggling. A person's on one, on, one, on one foot and they're having to juggle. And coins represents values. It represents money as well, but let's see its values. You're juggling. Do you like this per about the person? But the thing is you can't change people to suit yourself. So we've got, you're juggling. You feel the need to walk away. And if you walk away, there's a new relationship. There's a much better, more fulfilling relationship for you. Not, I think, with this person that you're already involved with and that you're having doubts about. Because somehow Pentacles here is, new, is juggling your values, but you figure out what it is that you actually care about. Then you go looking for that and then you're going to find it because the star is here. And that's why your wishes are going to come true. Not because things are going to suddenly turn around with this individual and be, and be that much better. And that, when I was thinking about this earlier, it occurred to me, we've got two cups here. And in the star, we've got two cups as well. So maybe what happens is, and going back to this two of pentacles, it's important to understand what relationships are for and what we get out of them and what we, what we give to them. And so... The two of cups here and the angel or the individual here, the woman here is pouring, as you can see, there's one cup here being poured onto the land and one cup being poured into the water. Here, the two cups are sort of connecting with each other, but it's not going to work. So somehow, if the person can understand that some, th some people belong together and some people don't, that some people make good combinations. It's like oil and water don't mix. And it can be that if the person in the Two of Cups recognises that some people are just not meant for us or it's not going to work no matter how much we want it, no matter how much we try. And if we can be like the, the woman here and put water with water and with the other cup with earth, then... We're going to recognise when somebody is right and when there's a point in trying to develop the relationship and when somebody is wrong for us or not our type or not our kind of person and it's never going to work. So you put some people go into one category of possibilities and other people go into the category of it's not going to work. And if the person can recognise that because of the understanding what he, he cares about with pentacles here, then he's going to find somebody new. But I think not um, the person that he's involved with at the moment or he wants to become more involved with. And so 
that's kind of what I wanted to do. But the 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 thought was, if you look at if you look at this card here, um, um, we've got the, the central card. Maybe you put these two here to the side, and you go this middle card can go one of two ways to the uh, the the two of cups or to the lovers reversed and this may be what the dilemma is for the question that can be why the person's defensive do i look for perfection or do i look for um th there's a, a joke about um you're looking for miss right or miss right now which i think is really funny but anyway um so maybe this is looking for Miss Right Now or looking for the, the person today, whereas this is looking for somebody for, forever. And so in the same way that you go from here to, to, to here and to here, maybe this card goes to these two and this card goes to these two. Because we'll next time we're going to look at these four cards and see what the future holds. Is it going to work? Because that's other people, that's the hopes and fears, and this is the final outcome. So we get an answer to the question about how it's going to work. But maybe we can also do something with the Two of Cups connected with these two cards for more explanation or the best way to deal with the Two of Cups. And we look at these two. It doesn't matter about it's the hopes. It doesn't matter about that and the final outcome. We're looking at the lovers upside down and these two cards to maybe understand why the lovers is upside down or what the lovers upside down is about. And that's the connect. So you've got you've got one divided into two, and each one divides into two as well, and maybe that's the symmetry of the the uh, the spread. At the same time, you've got one upright card in the middle you've got a line here and you've got a line here so you've got one three and four and that's it's because four how do you get to four maybe it's two times two and that's what made me think of um this card relates to these two and this card relates to these two whatever they happen to be okay so that was it for the moment. Um, uh, if you didn't already take a look at the tarot.ca and get the um, the downloadable PDF that's down just below the sign up for the newsletter form. There's a, a button you click on it and you can it'll open a PDF and you can right click and save it. Um, I think for next time. I'll have another one there, um, but at the moment um, I haven't quite got it together yet. But so there will be more uh, downloadable PDFs for you um, in a few days when I come back with number 134. So that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching. If you have comments or questions, um, leave, them, leave them down below or email me directly. Okay, bye-bye.